we're down in uh, Rio Grande, California. I'm getting ready to do these sliders, and I'm going to do this window from start to finish 100%. Uh, I've had a member that asked me to do this so they could see exactly what I used to do a flat glass job from start to finish. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is prep the window. And for that, I'm going to use this 5-inch Triumph rather than the 1-inch razor blade. I'm going to go slowly on my first swipe and make sure that I don't hear fabrication defects. If it sounds like sandpaper, that means the window has fabrication defects and you do not want to use a razor blade. In that case, you would just use a scrub pad and scrub pad really thoroughly. This feels 100% smooth, so I'm going to just razor blade it as I normally would. And the main focus is on the edges. The center is important, but the edges is where all your contaminants comes, comes from. I'm getting the tip of that Triumph blade underneath the rubber and just being nice and thorough. drop cloth we get at Harbor Freight. It's a packing blanket. Works great for absorbing some of the water that may get on the ground. Sometimes we'll also use our Soak Shield microfiber cloth. Either one work great. Okay, so now that I have the whole window razor bladed, I'll take some paper towels, wrap them around my finger, and just go around the edges. You can see what that looks like. It's filthy, so go around the edges really nice. And then in addition to the rubber, you want to just get the frame all the way around in case the film accidentally were to bump this handle or any of the frame. In this case, I want to make sure the door is locked so it doesn't keep opening on me. All right. Now I'm ready to get my measurement. In this case, the window is exactly 33 inches wide. So I'm gonna cut the window about two inches bigger. So I'm gonna cut it 35 inches wide by 78, 33 by 78. So I'll come over to my film and notice how I have this film rolled up. In this case, it's DL15 but I've got the film coming out of the box this way. And I said 35, so I'm gonna measure from my spacer, go 35. This is a 36 inch box, so I'm just gonna leave it at 36. Now, we always find, on our flat glass jobs, we always find a, a flat place that's elevated to set the film. In this situation, it's a bar top, it's, it's easy. This is how I do my measurements. I measure down to the ground. In this case, it's 48. I pinch at 48, keep the tape measure in the same spot, and where I pinch, pull it down until I see 78 up here. So right there is 78. And then I'll see a mark on one of these stools or something, and I know where to pull it to. So I gotta pull it to the ground once, roll it up, and then pull it to there a second time. So what I mean is I pull it to the ground one time, spot that I marked on the, the stool a second time. Then I will take my knife and I'll trace the box. Okay, now I'm going to come over to my window. I'm going to squeegee it, do a final squeegee.
this will be my final spray. This is where I want to be very nice and thorough. Notice how when I spray the window, I, I work in a uniform fashion. I'm not just bouncing around, that way it's really nice and thorough. Okay, now here's the trick to the reverse roll. When you have the film rolled up, you want to make sure that your roll is in front of the film. If your roll is back here, it's not set up correctly. So my liner is here, the film is here, and this roll is facing the window. It's not, if it's like this, it's not going to work. So now I'm going to mist the liner. This is liner right here. I'm going to mist the liner. I'm going to split the film with my mouth, which takes practice if you're just getting started. And so there's the liner. Now I'm going to roll this up a little bit more so the liner's touching the roll. And I'm going to run my finger through here. Okay. So now this is adhesive and the liner is right here on the roll. That's why I misted it. So now I'm ready to grab the adhesive, slide my hand over here, grab the adhesive, and then I'm going to do this and it's going to pull the liner off for me. Carefully place it over the window. I got the door handle on the left side, so I'm placing it a little bit more to the right side than the left side. And then, as you can see, the liner's right here. Now, if the liner didn't come all the way off down here, so you don't want this liner to really touch the window, otherwise it pulls the uh, it pulls the moisture off the window. So I'm going to carefully reach my hands underneath here. So that's the reverse roll. Been having a lot of questions about that. How do you work that? Notice the trash can I have. There's a lot of different companies that make the pop-up trash can now. I think that's critical. It looks professional. It saves a lot of time versus having to open up a trash bag every time you want to throw something away. Okay, now I'm going to miss the top. I'm going to take my Fusion extended handle. It's the Fusion 8 with a Blue Max blade, and I'm going to start right along the top. work my way down, overlapping my strokes 50%. Notice how I stopped before I bumped the film at the edge. That's where you get a lot of contaminants if you, if you squeegee too far at first. Okay. Now for the relief cut. In this case, the window is not recessed a lot. So I want to line my thumb up just right with where I want the film to end on the glass, right there. And I keep my thumb right there and I poke my knife in right at the tip of my thumb. And then just pull away. And I'll do the same thing on all four corners. You might not be able to see this, but I'm lining my thumb up with exactly where I want the film to end once the job is done. Poking in and just pulling away that film. And this is how you get your corners clean with no creases. Because the film's not building up when you go to press in there with your cutting tool. Now I've got several different cutting tools I like to use for different situations. For this situation and for most situations, 
I like to use the easy reach. Let's uh, see where that is in all these tools. Here it is. The easy reach. It's got a super thin profile, so it leaves a very, very tiny gap. And the way you hold the easy reach has a lot to do with how big the gap ends up. If you hold it like this, you're going to get a much smaller gap than if you hold it like this. Now, generally, if you're just starting, you want to hold it straight at the glass, a nice 45 degree angle. So I'm just holding it straight at the glass this way. What that does is when I come up from the bottom, it makes it easy for me to have the cuts meet to where I don't have a step in the film. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm trying to hold it straight at the glass. Be really careful going around this handle. And I'll pick that up. And you always want it curled over like that. Put your finger there and just slowly pull away. You never want to get excited and pull the film quickly. So again, straight at the glass. And I'm flexing my blade against the easy reach. And that's what I'm talking about. You don't want to step where the where you meet on your cuts. Let's come down. And if, if making a cut ever feels awkward, you have to experiment with different body positions. Come back to this video and refer to my different body positions. Notice where I put my butt. Notice how I'm pulling up. If I try to do this in a different body position, it's going to feel completely different. It's going to feel awkward. For, for me now, it's just second nature. But at first, new guys will be like, I don't know why this feels so awkward for me. It's because it's not second nature to just get in the correct body positions. You have to experiment with the body positions. Or like I said, come back to this video and dissect the different body positions that I'm getting in. Notice how right here I'm using my left hand on the tool and my right hand on the knife. And then I switch hands for here. If I tried to do the same hands over here, it would feel awkward. So I switch hands. Now my right hand is on the cutting tool and my left hand is on the knife. That little, little tip can make a huge difference if you're feeling awkward. Because if you're feeling awkward, you mess up your cuts. And then you get frustrated. And then you mess up the next try. And it all snowballs out of control. Every, every beginner has experienced that. Once you get frustrated, it's just like any sport. Everything is downhill from there. right here. I went down as far as I can. Now I'm going to switch the tool, switch my hand position, put my elbow up in the air, and I'm going to come up from the bottom. So I know some of this is redundant for the experienced guys, but like I said, we've been getting a lot of requests from the guys that are just getting started. Show me how to do a window start to finish. Show me what tools you use. So that's what we're doing here. Once I'm done with this window, I'm going to lay out all the tools I used for this job. Okay, so I made all my cuts, and now I can squeegee off to the edges. I'll start for the top, overlap 50%. I like this handle a lot because I could use two hands to get a lot of moisture out. And it just saves on fatigue being able to use two hands like this. Now when you're just starting, when you're making your cuts, if you have a step on the side, you want to be cautious of squeegeeing like this because the film can catch on one of the steps and tear the film. 
So you want to get in the habit when you're just starting to just squeegee straight into the rubber and stuff. You don't want to slide along the edge. Once you get confident with your cuts and you're not, you're not having steps in the film, then you can start to run your squeegee up that. Okay, so now we're just about done. There's just one last step that you need to take before it's 100% completed. You take the same tool that you use to make your cuts and you wrap a paper towel around it and we call it wicking or bumping and you just go around the edge. You don't need to start in the middle, just about an inch, two inches away from the edge and just go and squeeze out any moisture with the paper towel and then that towel absorbs the moisture as soon as it exits the film. And then when you're on a residential commercial job, flat glass film, you want to get in the habit of throughout the job checking on, on the window that you did before the last because little fingers will pop up. So what I have found is the best way is to get your face close to the glass and look down the edge because that way it's easy to see the finger. So I'll get down here, look down the edge. Look like this. And one time is not enough. You have to do it throughout the job. And then when you're all done with the job, the last thing you do is do that one more time. Okay, so this window is complete. I'm ready to move on to the next three windows. Um, real quick, let's lay out all the things I used on this job. I used the Easy Reach to make my cuts. I used the Triamp to clean. I used a large, in this case, it's a 12-inch squeegee. I use the Fusion longer handle with the Blue Max. I obviously used a knife. I used paper towels. Um, what else did I use on this job? This is all automotive stuff. You may want a scrub pad to scrub on the frames a little bit more. I obviously used this pop-up trash can. I used a spray bottle. That is the stuff I used on this particular job. I used a tape measure. And I believe that's everything I used on this job. Obviously, I used my pouch to hold that stuff. You don't need the pouch, but it makes it a whole lot easier. In this case, we're using the dirty pouch. Um, we've got this little briefcase type thing that we carry some extra tools in. There's a lot of different variations of this. We like this because it's on wheels. Got it from Home Depot. I think it was 30 bucks. But other than that, uh, we'd like to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything you want me to focus on more or go into more depth on, and we'll wait to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Austin Cook.